there's this short animated film, four minutes long, you can watch it right here, called The Cookie Thief. And I think it offers a wonderful illustration of what I mean by the term personal responsibility, which is the subject of today's video. In the film, an elderly woman is convinced that a young man sitting next to her is stealing her cookies. Her initial irritation eventually culminates in straight up rage. But here's the twist. The woman later discovers, much to her disbelief, that she was in fact eating his cookies, that she was the true thief, not the young man. And this gets at the essence of personal responsibility. Her experience, which in this case was one of angry victimhood, wasn't happening to her, but she was actively creating it through her whole set of assumptions and prejudices, stories and interpretations, beliefs, actions, and reactions, she was giving rise to her experience. And we're all doing this all the time. We all create our experience while simultaneously forgetting or denying that we're doing exactly that. With one hand, we give rise to it, and with the other hand, we cover our tracks, thus feeling ourselves to be nothing more than victims of external circumstance. So when I talk about personal responsibility, I'm talking about the courageous recognition that I am already always the active creator of my experiencing and that it can't actually be otherwise. Nobody and no thing is more responsible for my experience of the world than I am. And I can't be fundamentally responsible for another person's experience of the world. That, when I try to, is when we get into what we call codependency. I can't resolve another person's experience for them, nor can I create their experience for them, and they can't do that for me. My personal responsibility manifests in the decisions I make, the lenses of interpretation I bring to external events, and the way I respond to said events. It consists of my perceptions, emotions and reactions. All of these come through me. They come out of me. They arise from me. In this way, personal responsibility is the unavoidable, inescapable ground of my experience. I am already always personally responsible even if I don't recognize it, much less if I like it. So this means that I don't get to not be personally responsible because I can't escape myself. I can claim that I'm not responsible, sure, but then I'm responsible for claiming that I'm not responsible. I'm not, and you're not, afforded the luxury of not actually being responsible for our experience of the world and of ourselves. We all have our own side of the street, and we can't sell our side of the street to somebody else, even if we would like to. And just to say it, if somebody comes along offering to buy up our side of the street and assume responsibility for us, I would be very, very, very cautious about engaging with such people. The only reason they would want to pretend that they could assume our own personal responsibility, that they could relieve us of it, is probably because they have some ulterior motives about manipulation and control. So. Here's the thing, had the woman in the video had a different set of assumptions, interpretations, and so forth, she would have had a radically different experience. She had the experience she had because she happened to be herself and not somebody else. Nobody made her have that particular set of assumptions and so forth. Those all just came naturally. They arose from within her. She may not have seen the principal role that she played in shaping her experience until it was too late, but that doesn't mean that she wasn't actively shaping it all along. In the recognition that personal responsibility is an inherent and ultimately unavoidable aspect of life, then the next step is to turn towards it willingly. Indeed, forming a healthy, accepting relationship with our fundamental responsibility that is there whether we like it or not is the first step to living freely and to improving the conditions of our life. It is the lens through which we acknowledge our agency and thereby liberate ourselves from compelling and sometimes juicy and oftentimes quite sticky uh, dramas of victimhood. It is the wedge that allows us to separate our tendency to blame external circumstances and to subsequently step into the empowerment that comes with the recognition of our inherent choice in any given moment. And it is the means by which we no longer feel trapped by external circumstances. When we see and then take conscious ownership of the way in which we are fundamentally responsible for our experience of life, we are empowered to tinker with our experience of life, with the experience that we create. For instance, if I recognize 
that my job isn't necessarily inherently stressful, but that I'm bringing an interpretation of stress and push, putting it onto the job. That is that I'm telling the job that it's stressful effectively then I can maybe do some things a bit differently and see if that changes the experience that I'm having of my job. Recognizing that we're in the driver's seat, we stand a better chance at getting to the destination that we would actually like to get to. But it does mean acknowledging the mess that we may already be in and our role in generating or giving rise to our current life circumstances. And generally speaking, us humans don't want to look at the mess, uh, much less assume any degree of ownership for it. To those ends, we employ all sorts of interesting and oftentimes quite creative mechanisms of denial, distraction, and avoidance. Even though we can't escape personal responsibility, because it's already always the case, as we've been saying, that doesn't stop us from trying to. And so we absorb ourselves in blame games and victimhood dramas. We use language that puts us in one down positions and we proclaim incapacity instead of unwillingness. We'll get to that a little bit more detail later. We employ a laundromat of excuses, stories, and belief systems that we unconsciously hope will let us off the hook. But to our ultimate dismay, we can't actually be let off the hook. Our denial of personal responsibility does not result in its disappearance. Our side of the street, like it or not, remains our side of the street. And when we do go about denying our fundamental personal responsibility or otherwise distract ourselves from it, generally speaking, our life doesn't work out so well. Our street, our side of the street gets a little bit dirty. Instead of taking effective action based on the circumstances we find ourselves in, we complain about the circumstances and blame them for our feelings and behaviors or lack thereof. And when we're caught up in avoiding recognition of personal responsibility, when that's the, the deeper down unconscious goal, then our unconscious investment is in maintaining blame, complaint, and victimhood drama, no matter the evidence of no matter the evidence to the contrary. Because giving those up would mean needing to face, come face to face with our inherent personal responsibility, which is precisely the thing that we're trying to avoid. That said, if you'd like your life to work a little bit better, if you'd like to feel a little bit better, and if you have an understanding or an intuitive sense that taking more conscious ownership of your already present personal responsibility is the means by which you can improve your feelings or your life, then there are a few practices that you can take on that I'll offer here. Again, these practices don't cultivate personal responsibility. They don't create it. They simply are the road by which you can return to it. It's already always there. It's not something that we generate. It's just something that we allow ourselves to see and come into relationship with. So I'm going to give you six different practices that you can take on to reclaim conscious ownership of personal responsibility. Number one, stop blaming anything yourself, external circumstances, people, etc. Because blame, even when it's directed at ourselves, it, it keeps us stuck in our reactions and in our feelings, preventing us from recognizing that we have the power to respond differently. Blame sounds like, just to give a few examples, if it weren't for X, I wouldn't have to do Y, or I would be able to do Z. It sounds like you it or they made me do something. You made me feel angry. You made me feel sad. No, you didn't make me feel sad because again, I am fundamentally the location of responsibility for the experience that I'm having. And so what you did over here may have given rise to certain conditions that triggered uh, reactions and interpretations in me that were pre-existing. And so I, I ended up feeling sad, but you didn't fundamentally make me. You didn't fundamentally, you're not the location of responsibility for my sadness at the end of the day. I am. Yes, you influenced it. I'm not denying that. But you didn't fundamentally cause it for me. That, the entire argument, the entire argument of personal responsibility, at least in the way I see it, is impossible. In dropping our blame, we see our inherent agency in any and all situations. That's number one. Number two is we quit complaining. Complaints are a signal 
that we're not doing a good job at taking care of ourselves in some way. So when we notice ourselves complaining, it actually cues us in to ways in which we're not effectively standing up for ourselves, asserting ourselves, um, making our needs known. The thing with complaints is that they're much easier and safer than requesting, asserting, and acting. Number three is to take conscious ownership of our choices. When people find themselves in unfavorable circumstances, myself included, it's very tempting to claim that we ourselves played no part in the arising of said circumstances. We don't want to acknowledge our inherent involvement. Instead of using language with ourselves like, oh, this is what I chose, or this is what the actions that I chose have resulted in, or this is what I'm actively choosing right now, we'll use different language that lets us off the hook a little bit. I had to do it. I had no choice. There was no other way. He, she, it, they made me do it. And so this one is number three is to take conscious ownership of the fact that we are actively always making choices. So we want to use the language of personal choice with ourselves and with others. Number four, again, a language thing is to replace the language of incapacity with the language of unwillingness. What I mean by the language of incapacity is the type of statements like, I can't. And what I mean by the language of unwillingness is the type of statements like, I won't. When we take refuge in I can't, we disguise what is, in fact, our unwillingness to face uncomfortable truths and take difficult action by pretending or looking at it like a lack of capacity or ability. Again, we're trying to let ourselves off the hook. And when we're when we replace I can't with I won't, we return to the ground of personal responsibility where we're actually going to find some sense of personal empowerment. Number five, we can use mantras. I sometimes find these helpful. These are little mantras to come back to whenever it occurs to us in our day-to-day -day experiencing. One of the ones I've been working with is I'm responsible for my experience. Or I might say to myself, how is it that I'm responsible for my experience right now? I might say to myself, I'm choosing this, this exact thing here right now, this exact precise immediate experience of my life, I'm actively choosing it in this moment. So returning to these mantras countless times a day will help us uh, to counteract the historical cultural programming that has us automatically assuming positions of victimhood. Look, the process of taking conscious ownership over our already existing personal responsibility is not easy. It is very difficult. Consciously owning our personal responsibility is an act of courage because it's going to take us out of our carefully constructed layers, layers which are sometimes suffocating perhaps, of comfort that we've spent a lot of time building up. In owning our personal responsibility, we stand to lose a certain modicum of ease and familiarity. We stand to have to confront feelings like guilt and anger and so on. And engaging with these difficult feelings is uncomfortable. Additionally, in some cases, we're going to be confronted with the limitations of our personal responsibility. Just because we recognize that we're responsible for our experience doesn't mean that we're able to just go out and create any experience that we would like to. And this, this recognition, this recognition of our limitation is likely to give rise to feelings of grief, rage, helplessness, difficult feelings, all of which complaints, blame, victimhood, drama, etc., were designed to help us get some distance from. So the unavoidable constraints of our human experience, they don't negate personal responsibility, but rather contextualize it within the broader tapestry of life's complexity. We're surrounded by constraints and limitations all the time, and the behaviors that we engage in and the stories that we tell ourselves within those constraints that is where personal responsibility shows itself. So personal responsibility operates within a framework of interdependence and infinite complexity. It's just one piece of a puzzle. It's not the only piece of a puzzle. Our impulse, and I really want to drive this point home, our impulse to avoid personal responsibility is not pathological. We all do it on some level some of the time. Our avoidance is motivated, in my opinion, by an earnest desire to take the best care of ourselves possible. Avoidance, denial, distraction, 
They're protective mechanisms that are designed to help us avoid a raw confrontation with might otherwise be entirely overwhelming. And this instinct for self-preservation, it's a noble human desire, or at the very least, it's a very human desire. And taking up positions such as blame and complaint and so forth are on some level effective means of self-care. They simply run out of real estate rather quickly and leave us feeling pretty awful, or at least maybe not as good as we could otherwise be feeling. Assuming ownership over always existing personal responsibility means saying goodbye to the stable but sometimes miserable conditions of our current lives. And that is genuinely scary. We're truly giving something up. We should, therefore, respect and exercise compassion, both for our desire to consciously own increasing amounts of personal responsibility and to our desire for self-protection, to our desire, that is, to deny or to not take conscious ownership over elements of our always already existing personal responsibility. At the end of the day, as I've been saying, personal responsibility is already always happening. Even if we avoid admitting it, even if we don't like it, in any given moment, we create our own experience. Responsibility, personal responsibility, therefore, isn't a demand or an imposition. It isn't something to strive for or to do. It is simply something to recognize. It is simply something to turn towards, to stop evading or more accurately, pretending to evade. As it turns out, we're also responsible for our attempts to evade it. As the elderly woman in the film learned, what we perceive as being done to us actually reveals our own role in the story. The young man in the film, confronted with a very similar set of external circumstances, had quite a different experience. He remained rather open and lighthearted about the whole thing. And it's not that his response was better, I mean, it was, but that's not the point that I'm trying to drive home here. It's that they're radically different experiences of a very similar set of external circumstances point to the fundamental and inescapable role that they both played in creating said experiences. In turning towards personal responsibility, we turn towards an element of reality that most of us, more often than not, would prefer to avoid. And this courageous turn towards personal responsibility is initially disturbing, but ultimately liberating. As you move through the world, you might consider asking yourself, hmm, how is it that I'm responsible in this moment for creating my experience of this moment? And then just see what happens. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment below with any questions or thoughts you have, and uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to receive more content like this. Have a great day. Cheers.